had the opportunity to talk with Michael Graves and his firm when we were doing the assessment study. The majority of our conversation sort of focused around the things on the building that may not have turned out quite the way they originally hoped. We were told that there were a few people in the building that had to have parking for their cars. That was probably the biggest mistake the city made. There aren't that many parking spaces and they should have done without them. As well as any ideas they might have had of things they would have done differently, changes that they might be willing to entertain in order to fix some of the problems that the building was dealing with. I would just assume the garage got glassed over and be made a, a gap or a pottery barn. How, <laughs> how nice that would be. In the very beginning, when I first started speaking with DLR, they wanted to be cautious. And the truth is, everything they wanted to do was just going to make the building better. The building has two fronts, if you think about it, because it has its front door on Fifth Avenue, but it's also on an important city park on Fourth Avenue. It faces the government center of the city. It is adjacent to the courthouse. It's adjacent to City Hall both of which face that side. And so this building has always had its back turned there. And that was a result of the city's requirements at the outset of the building of having parking in the building. It was a urban design problem from the beginning that was commonly recognized in the architectural community and in the much of the city. It was actually Patrick Burke with Michael Graves' office that encouraged us to go big. The truth is we'd like to have treated the building with two front sides. We would have liked to have opened the building up on the park side. I think that's one of the great things about this renovation. Initially we were going to keep the same frame of the original parking garage and the uh, design and he came out and he said if you're going to do it, do it and go big. It was really with his blessing that the architectural team and the owner team felt comfortable going ahead and, and making that big of a move. In fact, when I went in the building close to the end of construction, I thought it was fantastic that you could go in on the high side on Fifth Avenue and the lobby was now opened up and with the parking garage entrance removed, you saw all the way through to the trees in the park. I thought that was a nice touch. We, we all look at it and think, yes, that's exactly the right answer. There was the fact that the original glazing in the building was extremely dark. It had about a 7% light transmittancy, which I think is comparable to about what you would find in a, a limo with tinted windows. <laughs> so being inside the building was literally like having your sunglasses on all the time. I think because of the public awareness of how dark this building was and how dreary it was inside, there was an understanding that we absolutely had to correct the internal experience. And as long as we kept the window frames roughly the same, the change in the color of glass would not be a problem. The only real question from a technical aspect in terms of preservation was what will it look like at night when the lights are on and it's dark outside and being able to see the floor plates because the glass actually spans across the floor plates and what will that difference of appearance from a historic standpoint look like. We were not only able to take advantage of more glass area, we changed that 7% light transmittancy glass to 77%. Going inside those spaces now, it's just a night and day difference and I think it's the one thing that we get more comments on from building users than anything else is just how amazed they are at how bright everything feels.